A heart surgeon wakes up in the morning, jumps out of bed, brushes his teeth, washes his face, brushes his hair. He heads downstairs, turns on the coffee machine, he butters his toast and he has his breakfast. He gets a letter through the door to say that his MOT is due, so he slips on his shoes, opens the door, heads out to the car and on his way to the mechanics. Now as he gets to the mechanics, a mechanics he's been going to for around three to five years now, very familiar with the mechanic and very happy with the service they provide. So he drives in, drops off his keys, and as he's about to leave to head back home, the mechanic calls him back and says, look, I have a question to ask you. So the heart surgeon turns around, heads back to the mechanic and says, how can I help you? The mechanic says, I've been thinking about this for a very long time. I see that me and you do very similar jobs. You know, you go to work, you help people. If somebody's in pain, you give them medicine. If there's something wrong with their limbs or their heart or their liver or their kidneys, you know, you do, you operate on them and you fix them. And the surgeon is there and he's smiling. And uh, the mechanic says, you know, because that's what I do. You know, I have some very difficult cars that come in that have, ac have had accidents, broken down, need this changing, that changing. And, you know, I open the bonnet and I fix it, etc., etc. But there's one thing that I've observed. We do a very similar job, but you get paid 10 times more than I do. Why is that? And the surgeon said, hmm. So he thought about it with a smile on his face. And the mechanic says, you know, I've been doing this for a very long time. I'm one of the most skilled mechanics in the area. If there's a problem, I'll fix it, no matter how difficult the problem is, no matter how difficult the engine that comes in, I'll fix it. The surgeon thought for a moment longer and he turned around and he said to the mechanic, how about you fix that engine while the engine is running? And the mechanic went silent. Now, what's the moral of the story here? Well, it's perspective. And what you will notice with the mechanic, he's been working for a very long period of time, very successful at his job, has fixed many cars in his life, has opened many engines and never had a problem in terms of making sure that he can get the job done. He looked at the heart surgeon and he says, well, look, this man wakes up, he goes to work, he operates on people, um, he's one of the best in the business, etc., etc." But what he failed to realize in this instance is what the heart surgeon is doing is totally opposite to what he's doing, even though there are similarities in a way. The response of the surgeon, which was this, try doing it with the engine running, makes things totally different. It changes the whole perspective. What's the point I'm trying to make? There are many traders out there that spend hours days, weeks, months, and years investing their time in learning how to become the best they can at their business, at trading. Whether it be back testing, building a trading plan, working on their psychology, learning to deal with their emotions better, etc, etc. Then they'll look at somebody else that they look up to, a trader that may have been trading for seven years who's now driving a luxury Ferrari or a Lamborghini, who's living in a big home, who doesn't work a nine to five, who has a family that are very happy, the wife doesn't work, the children are in private school, and they compare themselves to them. They turn around and say, well, I'm taking the same trades as he's taking. I'm waking up at the same time that he's waking up. I'm trading the same pairs he's trading, and I'm taking the same patterns he's taking. Here we look into the perspective situation again. Just like the mechanic and that trader thought that he was doing the same thing as that surgeon, like the trader was looking at the successful trader, there are differences. And what are they? They don't know how long the successful trader has been successful for one. They don't know what they've been through from day one. They don't know what they've had to slug through from year two. They don't know what they're going through now. Now to compare your somebody because of the materialistic things that they have or the trades that they may be taking or the things that you perceive to be the same as you 
is not going to be sustainable for a trader in the long run if you want to become successful. Now they say the devil is in the detail. So looking at something from a surface point of view is not going to give you the answers that you're looking for to become a successful profitable trader. Now you don't know, like the surgeon said, what they are doing comparable to you. The surgeon is not just repairing somebody's heart or stitching up somebody something. They are doing a life-saving work while somebody is awake that potentially could be detrimental ending in the life of somebody. Whereas the mechanic is fixing a car, if something goes wrong, guess what? You can order a new part, you can find a new bolt, and you can eventually fix the valve in time. The engine's not running, so you have no worries about having your hand chopped off or getting electrocuted. Now, with traders, you might look at somebody and say, well, they're doing this and I'm doing that. But do you know how they're dealing with their emotions? Do you know how many losses they've taken in a row? Do you know what they do when they take a loss? Do they go and meditate? Do they go out and spend some time on their own? Do they scream and shout? Do they, are they really emotional? You don't know that. You don't know what they're doing while you're sleeping. You don't know what they're doing while you're awake. You don't know what they're doing while you're figuring out whether you can be like them or not. Unless you really understand what they're doing, the life that they're living and how they're dealing with their situations, then you cannot really compare yourself to them. To be a great trader, one must have a good sense of self-awareness and emotional intelligence. Now you might say to yourself, well, I'm very self-aware and I'm very intelligent. But the question is, why do so many traders fail? So most traders fail because of something called the amygdala hijack or the reptilian brain. This is the evolutionary knee jerk that causes pleasure, pain, hope and fear. So what does that mean for you? Well, it means that when a trader wins a trade, there is a euphoria causing excitement and then thoughts of wealth and happiness. When a trader loses a trade, it causes them to feel pain, regret, anger, and then leads on to revenge trading. So what does the amygdala hijack mean for you as a trader? Well, it's very personal and it triggers an emotional response that's very overwhelming and out of measure with how a trader is supposed to feel. It actually, in fact, creates more of a significant emotion. Now, how is that relevant to what we're talking about now? Well, this goes all the way back to what we've said in the beginning, perspective. What you think you should be doing as a trader or how you should be applying yourself as a trader is all well and good, but comparable to what you actually do versus what you know you should be doing is two different stories. Just like the mechanic thought he was doing the exact same thing that the surgeon was doing, in theory, there are major differences. There's a beautiful quote from Jim Rohn who says, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. So studying what others are doing will definitely help you. But in the long run, you have to make sure that you are doing everything in your power to make sure that you get the job done. If you want to be a successful, consistent trader, then I advise you to stop focusing on what others are doing. Start focusing on your own journey. The answers that you need for your success or for you to become successful are going to come through the route that you take. Now, if you find yourself taking trades that end up losing, you need to make sure that you document them because what you would eventually be able to do is study not just your trades, but your behavior of your trades. You'll be able to find the answers that you're looking for that will hopefully in the near future prevent you from doing really silly things. Now, trading is very fun and I totally get that. It's a very exciting venture for a lot of you. 
It provides a lot of hope and uh, for a lot of you, I mean, I know that's very important. Some of you are not living the best lives, have come from poverty, have maybe been very fortunate, but the point is a lot of you want your own freedom and you wanna be able to own your own time. So what you have to understand is in order to become a very successful trader, you have to make sure that what you're doing becomes mechanical. Not emotionless, because that's impossible. You will always have emotions in trading, but you must learn to control them. But if you want to study somebody else, try to figure out what route did they take? Don't just look at the results and the materialistic things that they have. Try to figure out their disciplines, their attributes, their routines. Ask them, when you lost a trade, what did you do? Don't ask questions like, how did you win that trade? What pattern did you take? Because I'm telling you now, the markets are totally random. Whether they took that trade a hundred times, I can tell you now, they may be able to recognize it under different circumstances, but it may make your life harder because you are not accustomed to that and it's not gonna work for you. Create your own identity. Create your own path. And the only way to really make sure that you succeed in doing this is by continuing, as I always say, executing, executing, executing. Stick to your plan. Identify your behaviors. See what your approach is. If something's not working, all you need to do is tweak it. Now, I know it's easier said than done. I've been there before. And telling you now, on your own personal journey.